Good afternoon or good evening, good morning here in California. Welcome to EPW 2021. This is our last day. We are in our share time. We've all um, have broken into different breakout rooms according to the um, grade alike or topic of interest. We are here with our wonderful panelists in the adapted physical education. Um, panel group, as I mentioned, we've got Cindy Chase, um, Kasha Givenrod, Jen Hebink, and Kim, tell me your last name. You Adafamo. <laughs> Adafamo, thank you. Um, and we've got some questions lined up for them, and they are going to drop some golden nuggets, some knowledge bombs, and please feel free to use the chat um, if you have any extra questions for them, if something kind of uh, gave you a little like spark and you're like, oh, wait, what about this? Um, or if you have any insight yourself, please feel free to share in the chat box. Uh, we are here to be better together and to learn. Our motto here is come to learn, leave as family. So please feel free. You are at home with us. You are safe and um, we're ready to get going here. So let's do some short intros. Um, tell us a little bit about yourself, where you're from, where you teach, just a little, you know, short little bio. We'll start with Cindy. Hi, my name is Cindy Chase and I live in Livermore, California, which is the Bay Area. And I teach one city over, which is in Pleasanton. And um, I've been, I think I've been coming to EPW for like, I think it's, I think it's 12 years or 11 years and stuff and been on the committee for, I think the last seven or eight. So, um, and I am also the 2020 um, Shape America National Teacher Adapted Physical Education Teacher of the Year. Thank you. And the Western District and um, Cape and Cape Escape 2019 um, toy. And I am excited to be here and um, love, 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 love. This is the great way for me to end is to see something that I wanted at EPW and we have progressed and look what we have. We have our own panel. We have all these people. So wonderful people share with us. Amazing. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry. Uh, Kasha, go ahead and uh, tell us a little about yourself. Great. Uh, my name is Kasha Givenrod. I'm an adapted physical education specialist in Brea, California, which is in Orange County. It's a little tiny district. Um, and I'm really excited to be here. This is my first time joining this uh, workshop and you guys are awesome. This is super fun this week. And um, I am the 2020 Caper uh, Adapted e Teacher of the Year. And um, I'm just really excited to be here and hear from all these amazing other teachers too. So let's do this. Awesome. Thank you, Kasha, for being here with us. Uh, Jen, go ahead and tell us a little bit about your. Hi, everybody. I'm Jen Hebank. I live just outside Minneapolis in a suburb called Maple Grove, Minnesota. And I teach in Buffalo. So I teach part time at Buffalo High School, part time at Buffalo Community Middle School. So I'm kind of that secondary level uh, adapted PE teacher. We call it DAPE in Minnesota. So if I use that word, that's what that means. Um, I serve on the MinShape Board of Directors. I serve on the Minnesota DAPE Leadership Committee. Um, I also serve on kind of a board of teachers of Unified PE, kind of directing where Unified goes in Minnesota. Um, and then I was the 2020 uh, Minnesota DAPE toy. So that's me. Amazing. Um, and last but not least, Ms. Kim, go ahead and introduce yourself. All right, I'm Kim Ketafamo. Um, I've been, I started out my teaching career in 1990 back in Bayonne, New Jersey. That's where I'm from. And I'm about 15 minutes outside of New York. So that's about where I am in Jersey. Um, I taught first at a public school, uh, K to eight, um, adaptive PE and regular PE. But then I took it a hiatus because I have a 23 now year old son, twins, that have uh, CP. So I am also a parent. So I've gone the parent route also. <laughs> so I've been in those all IEPs as both. <laughs> um, I now, actually I taught my son for 11 years because I now work at the first CP of New Jersey. 
And I've been here for all, I think I'm going on my 13th year and all. So I'm fully adapted PE. I have kids from three to 21. And um, from, uh, from regularly, you know, like whatever I can do, ambulatory kids all the way to profound and severe. Um, I also coach three different Special Olympics uh, um, sports, bocce, bowling, and track and field. And I've been on the Challenger Baseball Leagues and all. In fact, we played at Yankee Stadium back when my son was nine years old. So it was kind of cool. And all. But um, I, I like to, to spread out with everybody, learn about everybody. So I just travel and I love this uh, virtual year because I've been in every state, <laughs> you know, going and learning and, and it's, it's absolutely awesome. So thank you for having me here. Awesome. So these are very decorated APE educators that we have here and they're about to share a wealth of knowledge um, for all of us and hopefully um, your, where all of our participants in here have um, uh, definitely that same knowledge to share back. I've already seen some of the names. Uh, Tracy, hello. Um, uh, my name is Stephanie. I will be your moderator for today. I'm a middle school physical education teacher in Chino Hills, California, um, and we're going to get started here. So did our little intro. Let's get into some questions so that we can get going. So first question, I think this is... Um, uh, definitely the most recent thing that has happened to us all. So I think it'd be um, right to start with uh, distance learning and hybrid and back to in-person, however your situation was. But question number one, what are some takeaways that you experienced during distance learning that you will implement in person or possibly hybrid this upcoming school year? And I'm going to open this to anybody that would like to answer this first. If we all have something to share, we'll go through everybody. If um, maybe your answer is a little similar to someone and you just want to step back and take the next question, that's totally fine too. But whoever is willing to take the first. Ah, Kasha, I see your hand up. Go for it. So every time somebody asks me this question, it sounds so silly, but this was a huge thing for my kids. I was distance learning, hybrid, distance learning, hybrid, and then we were back full. And so we experienced all the things within this last school year. Um, and what I started doing at first when we were full distance learning was I had always taught dance and mu incorporated music, but I realized that to get my students to engage with the screen, I needed to play a movement video. And my favorite ones were Cuckoo Kangaroo. And I don't know if you guys know them. I became a total Cuckoo Kangaroo groupie <laughs> this year. I think we have literally done every single one of their uh, dance along videos. And it's just a really great way. It became my students cue that, oh, we're starting class. This is how we start. And I've always had a warm up routine and I've always done that, but this seemed to trigger a connection in a different way. Um, and I, I don't know that I can completely explain it, but it was a different video every week. And that was how we started it. And so even when we came back in person and all I had was my little laptop, we were doing them and we still did them and the kids still enjoyed it even in person. So uh, cuckoo kangaroo for the win. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Anybody else have any takeaways? Uh, Jen, go for it. Yeah. So one of my biggest takeaways is, you know, like Kasha, I, we started in hybrid, then we went to distance learning and then my students with disabilities came back while everybody else is in distance learning. So I had them for a little while and then everybody was hybrid again, but then a whole hallway of students with special needs were <laughs> quarantined. So I had the opposite became super competitive. So I think the thing that I learned about my students the most is that kids thrive learning with other kids. And so when I'm thinking about my students who struggle with those social, emotional, you know, connecting with others, um, partner play, some of those things that like really like hit me kind of hard. Like kids just need friends. Kids need, um, kids need peers um, with them. And so I think what I realized, you know, cause I teach unified and unified when I took those partners away or when I took 
the teammates away. Like I really saw the difference between when they were together and when they were apart and kids just thrive when they're together. Um, so I think that's what I'm taking most is that like, I'm doing something right. Um, but also when things get disconnected, I can kind of start to see where things will fall apart again. Um, and so kind of um, padding those areas and increasing the social connection, even still, like I know that's important, um, but it really make, makes a huge difference when kids can learn from other kids rather than just me telling them what to do. And I think we all know that, but that's what I took from that. With me, um, our kids, uh, well, we were, in March, we went home in 2020 and we stayed home until August of 2020. So we go to school ESY. So we were in school, we only have two weeks off between June and, and July. So we were totally um, on, on the screens. So what was nice about that is because the kids were actually going through a grieving process in the very beginning because we were missing Special Olympics. We were missing our prom. We were missing our graduation. So we were actually taking those opportunities to learn some coping skills and moving on and doing things. We also took an opportunity to make a lot of um, like projects where we were doing um, slideshows and dance, like we were doing our own non, non um, social media uh, TikTok dances. And we were sending them off to the staff to allow and help them uh, deal with the transition of being home and all, which was helping them be part of the transition at home. So that was really cool. We also made a big giant where the kids were always in their classroom in the um, computer. But what we did is once a week, we made a jam session where everybody from all the classes came out at one o'clock or two o'clock on a Thursday, and they got to be with all their peers too. And all. so that was a great thing um, for them to totally uh, connect. We also told that we weren't socially distant, we were physically distant. So we kept that social bond with our students. And I think teaching wise, um, we used a lot of Google slides. So we went from like, a mixture of working out through games. Um, we worked out uh, through dance. We worked out um, through musical instruments. Um, we even did reaction times where I would take something from Be Well Played and I would totally take snapshots and then we'd make it into our own game, you know, that would be for our skill levels. So we were taking a lot of that stuff. We were even taking videos from like Mikey's commercial um, and, you know, let Mikey try the new food. So um, we took into commercials and we took a slinky commercial and made it into flexibility. And the kids were also part of this, part into the thing. So I had them actually looking at nostalgic type um, uh, commercials and making it into part of our lessons. So neat. Did a lot of SELs. Um, in August, we would trans transition into the school. So my students had to be in the classroom and or they went outside. Um, we couldn't be in the gym. Uh, we couldn't share equipment. So I made PE packs for every kid in the building, had their own PE pack um, with their names on all their equipment. And then um, I was also um, uh, going into the building through, so, uh, through the media. Um, because I was still home until March. So I had people in my classroom who were my moderators who were actually being the physical me while I was teaching the class through the computer. <laughs> I even went outside on the iPad <laughs> and it gave the kids a chance to turn around and be their self-evaluators. They started assessing themselves, running back over to the iPad and saying, guess what, Miss Kim, I made eight out of the 10 shots. And it was like all of a sudden they were taking control of their assessments. And it was such a great thing for my students to be able to do that. They, they actually went to the next level 
So I, you know, even though it was like a negative time of the year, it was so positive for my students. That's amazing. Cindy, you want to add on? Yeah, and so that, I, I agree um, with both of these ladies and stuff. I think that there are silver linings. I think we had, we definitely were more, um, um, I think I didn't come back till March, but I, we did have the, the, we did have from January to March of this year where we had the instructional aides in there with the students in my elementary. And all my different classes were different but one thing that I really found was that structure of what I did, that routine piece became something that they all expected. We did the same warm ups and we would finish up our warm ups and do and possibly do a little bit of either Google slide exercise. But then I'd always say, okay, now it's time to dance. And we always danced. And in the high, I'll talk about the high school. In the high school one, I did, I had the, I saw the class twice a week. And one time I usually did either DJ Rafi or we did something that we taught. And because he has great white background and some simple ones. And so it really became something that worked out really well. Or I would teach it, but I did find the the um, visual from the um you know, from something um, camera wise, they did, they usually responded more to it. And then one time a week, they would get to, um, they would get to choose the song. And I had one girl, Sakina, that loved Disney and she loved Frozen and she loved to talk and speak out. And my guys did not speak out. So for the first month that we did that, we had a lot of Frozen. But what we did with it is I finally said, get your scarves out. And so, you know, we, they didn't yet have scarves. They didn't get scarves and equipment till about January when we got some funding from the state and it came in. They all made up whatever they had from tissue paper. And um, one of, actually, I think he's listening, Dame, one of my instructional aides, they would all be there. And I, I'd be almost like one-to-one -one with that, even though we're all remote. And he would have a rug and I had someone that was colorful and it would just look beautiful to look on the screen and see like 13, 12, 13 of us just doing the music that way. Um, after a while, after a month, we did end up going, there you go, Dane, you did a great job with that. We would demonstrate different things and um, the kids got it, but the, the transition was a lot easier because they weren't transitioning other places, but that format of starting with a warm up, doing a dance, usually a video interactive, that was that social piece of would you rather or the different ones had to really be picky on what was appropriate or what, what my students could use or I would use one. And then I created my own fitness wheel and different games. And then we always ended in yoga. And um, at the high school, that was really cool to see. At my elementary, I had a small group that had four, four boys and had four dads. And it would be awesome to see those dads doing the bear walk with their kids and doing the ball. And a student that would not be able to stay in with the large group for very long, doing everything possible. I knew he was skilled, but I didn't always know it because um, he'd get anxious so much. You know, he he had the lose the clothes for a while to get out of there, out, get out of jail, kind of like I don't want to play to what he was doing. So it was great to see into their homes and see the parents and to be uh, teammates with them. But we had a lot of, you know, so there were some silver linings. And when we came back, it, we were able to do things. I did find outside, which I thought was really strange, worked better for my students because when they went in the multi-purpose room, there was too many other things going on. And, and stuff, the guy, ladies were doing the lunches and all the tables were down. So we had a space and I thought, I have enough space, but then I kept seeing this because the kids had not seen the banners on the multi-purpose room gym for a year. So when we were outside and I was able to do, you know, and they had individual equipment, we were able to do it. And in the end, we did do a special Olympic fitness challenge, um, which ways we all did YMCA together and we were able to get fourth and fifth grade classes. We just were in like a little bit of sectioned the principal was awesome. Him and the assistant principal came out and there was about five classes and they were, were doing the, you know, distance this, but it, it's kind of like you said, that social piece, we had our social, but when we, that, that last two weeks, when we were able to do that, that you can really tell there was, you know, that heart push was, was good. So there were silver linings in it, but it was challenging on all ends. 
Absolutely. And I'm so glad, I'm so glad each and every one of you answer this question because we all have our own takeaways and, and as, as tough as, as it was at times, um, those positives were there. We just needed to open our eyes and reflect and, and, um, you know, see, see those, those moments with our students. We're like, okay, this isn't so bad. You know, we're, we're doing things here. So I'm really glad each one of you had that chance to, uh, um, answer that question. But something that really stood out to me was um, Jen mentioning about relationships and students needing peers and friends and um, how much they lack that this year. And I know everyone here is in a different space when it comes to you. You experienced all, all formats of learning. You experienced two formats of learning. For myself, I just experienced the one. I was distance learning all year long from a computer. So um, I, this is going to be really important for me, this next question. So because it's so important and because our students were, you know, in that distance learn, learning format, and then, you know, those of you that were able to get the chance for them to transition in a hybrid format, or even they let everybody back like they did at my school, I was just in a distance learning pool. So everybody that chose not to do this or not to do in person, were just thrown into classes with teachers who primarily did distance learning. How are you all going to build repertoire with your students after a year, a year and a half of distance, or I'm sorry, a half a year of distance learning? Um, how, what's that, what's that going to look like for you? How are you going to heal or bridge that um, missing piece that, you know, we lacked so much last year? Kim, go ahead. Um, like I said, um, in September, the kids are been all back and now we're in our ESY program now too. So I think what we're doing right now is we finally got back in the gym. So the kids are ecstatic because now we're in the gym and we have eight stations that the kids are going from sp spot to spot. So we're still not sharing. But I think that it's what's wonderful is our transitional kids who have missed out so much on transition are now going to be starting their jobs where they're going to come in and help my little kids. So I think that transition of the older kids helping out the younger kids and getting that job experience is going to really help my students uh, socially and um, emotionally and stuff. And I think too, we have kept up a family night. We do family night once a month and we've kept that up virtually. So the kids are really looking forward to that connection with the families. And like I said, we've been doing a lot of um, projects where the kids are doing projects and sending them home to the families. And I send home um, monthly um, interactive activities for the families. So that's how we've all been um, coming together. And I think it's helped the kids when we've transferred back into the gym because now they're actually taking control of the choice boards and what activities they're going to go on to, making their own goals and all that kind of stuff. So it's really been a really joy for us and the kids. So that's our transition. Jen, go ahead. I see you. Sticking my hand up. <laughs> um, so one, one thing that I've just been thinking lately is that we need to meet kids where they are at so you can meet them where they're at so you can take them where you want to go rather than coming in and being like, this is where we need to go. Like we all know, I guess, teachers, we got to kind of rebuild those relationships. And I'm thinking about a couple of students that I have um, who I've had since the sixth grade that I know, but they like transitioned to high school. Like this is their freshman year and they haven't been to the high school yet. Um, so some things I'm thinking about is like, okay, is some of the behavior that we kind of knocked out in middle school, is that going to be coming back, you know, running down the hallway and hiding in the lockers? Like, are we going to see that again? Like, so just kind of seeing where they're at behavior wise that, you know, that's some of the things that we kind of got to, you know, observe um, first. So I'm going to be thinking about that. Um, but also I think, I think it, it's 
hard that we had to do distance learning, but also those students that were doing distance learning. I was one of those teachers that had to do distance learning and um, like doing lives at the same time I had in person. And so like having that was really, really hard, but also coming back, like they know the students that they're going to be with. They know that they've had me for a while. Like maybe that is kind of a positive that, you know, they kind of know what the, what, what class might look like a little better. Um, but those are some of the things that I'm thinking about is like, okay, well, we have students with goals of, you know, navigating the weight room. Well, they haven't even seen the weight room and it's been, you know, a long time, a really long time. So even just, I feel like we're going back to the basics again. It's like first day of school, you know, even if they're a sophomore now, like, so those are some of the things that I'm looking at is like reestablishing those routines, um, social interaction, like just like the most basic skills, I think we're going to have to go back and just revisit. So. Yeah, I would agree with what Jen said. Um, because we went back twice in person on two separate occasions <laughs> last year, um, it's like a constant reevaluation time. So um, every time we went back, it was kind of like, I usually like to have a highly structured class environment, but I kind of had to play some like loosey goosey type games so that I could evaluate where my kids were at that time, because I had to understand myself where they were behaviorally because yeah, some of the kids regressed behaviorally where there were things that had extinguished and now, oh, look at this is back. Um, even after just a couple months of being at home or, you know, just the social impact of being at home and the skill development part of being at home. So there was lots of different factors. So I ended up kind of doing more um, like large group activities that were a little bit more free, a little bit more fun. Um, like I said, kind of loosey goosey, less structured, just so that I could have time to evaluate where they were. And then like Jen had said, meeting them where they're at, at that time. Stephanie, I found yes. that I found that Cassia is the same thing um, when we moved from the classroom back to the gym, because even the kids like they were since September to June, they knew all the rules for social distancing and all that stuff in the classroom. So now we had to go into the gym where they're like, wow, look at this huge room, <laughs> you know, and all this equipment. I mean, my kindergartners, kindergartners came in and there's only four of them, five of them in the class, but three of them were like tornadoes and hurricanes that came in the first time they arrived. And it was funny because one would go into a, a, the activity and come back out and I'd be like, here's my mad face, Miss Kim's mad, <laughs> you know, and and then it was funny because then they'd go back in that spot and then come back and just point to my man face. <laughs> and well, and then they just kept doing it like four times that period would go back into the equipment area, which is outside the, in the gym. And then they would come back and hit the, the man face. I'm like, yeah, you know, I'm I had, why are you doing it? <laughs> so you're right. It's actually, you know, you're going back to like what they did six months ago. And now, you know, even though they're a year older, they're going back to what they were doing. And also, yeah, and, and then now it's now been two weeks since we've been in the gym. We're in our second right, week of ESY. Um, sorry, we're calling buses yeah, right yeah. now. Um, but now all of a sudden he's like breaking that because now he knows what to expect. I'm gonna go on mute because of my buses. Uh, that's awesome. Do I have anyone else that would like to share on this question? I definitely agree that we're going to hit the rewind button next year quite a bit and um, go back to uh, reteaching and um, again, meeting students where they are is the perfect way to, to say that. Um, so it's, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be fun. It's going to be exciting. It's going to be everything jam-packed in one school year next year. And uh, we definitely have um, our work cut out for us. But um, knowing all of you, uh, we are all like-minded educators. And I know we're going to do a fantastic job with our students. I'm going to uh, fast forward here a little bit. Um, hey, Steph. Yes. I think Tracy was going to share something. 
sorry did I miss her hand I don't yeah. see her it, it was it was like this it was oh. the little hand not the not the ears like yeah it's can not I, the gen I'm like <laughs> I wish I could move her let me see if I can change the view. There we go. Gallery. This is going to be my jam because now I can see everybody's faces because I was only seeing like four of you and I'm like, where is she? All right, Tracy, go for it. Sorry about that. Thanks. And thanks, Cindy, for allowing me or asking me to crash this party. (laughs) So um, I just love what everybody said. Um, uh, I think it's just so important that we meet the kids where they're at, as as others have said, that we um, accept them for who they are. And we acknowledge the fact that we're basically starting all over again. And we don't have expectations that our students are unable to meet. So I love hearing everything from everyone. Just a heads up, um, Open has some new resources coming out called Bridging the Gap. And um, I think it's gonna be very, very pertinent to what all of us need at this time. So I just wanted to share that, thanks. I love open. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Amazing. Um, uh, maybe in the next few minutes or two, I can go grab that link and throw it in the chat box. Um, but I'll wait until someone gets going with their their answer. But I was going to fast forward because um, a lot of times when I was teaching distance learning, um, I definitely had some parents kind of hear what I was saying to the students and they got a little chance to go inside of my classroom and what we do and see what we teach and see what their kids are learning, um, which is awesome um, because oftentimes they don't really know what's going on in phys ed or you know APE when their students are at school. Uh, so I think for some, it was a really good, you know, uh, peek hole into our, into our classrooms and, you know, uh, what we deem is very important um, and what we give to our students and, you know, being a healthy individual, living an active lifelong um, life. And, you know, they get, they got all of those nuggets every so often if they walked, you know, by the computer or saw what their students were doing or saw the projects that we had them do. Um, But how important it is to carry that over into the next year and continue to advocate for our programs um, with families as stakeholders. So next question is, what are ways you engage families or are going to engage families or even your community in your program? Go ahead, Kim. All right, I'll go in between uh, the buses. Um, (laughs) Really? So how I engage families is like throughout the whole thing that I send home monthly things like interactive activities that my my families can do, but also have health in there and some social emotional learning stuff in there, not just for my students, but for them, you know, to do at home. Uh, I also have my family nights that are once a month. So we engage them in all that. I take lots of pictures and videos, which I just shoot off to my families of what we're doing in class. Um, And one thing that I love to do is, okay, one thing that I love to do is I love to find out what's in the community. So I have a lot of students, including my own son, who go surfing with some of the um, uh, places that are out there. So walk in water, um, best day foundation in Jersey. And I know California has one best day foundation and my kids, like we get them out there surfing or we get them out there with their challenger leagues. I had eight, 10 of my students on my challenger baseball game on Sunday mornings, you know? So I think it's really important to get the kids out there and learning and the parents to know what kind of activities are in their I have 20 uh, school districts and I have five different counties that come into my school. So I research and I find out what's in everybody's counties and find out what's going on in their recreation departments. And I, I send off that information to my parents. So I think that's what's really great. And when they're across the hall in P- PT, lined up for all their therapy sessions or they're lined up for the parents to come in for the doctors and the orthopedist and all that, I get to see the parents and I get to say, hey, 
you know, what are you doing this weekend? And I know all about all their trips and all that stuff. So I think that's really a great way to connect with the parents. Cindy, go ahead. Now I had to go after Kim with all that. <laughs> no, um, I'm just gonna, uh, I, I just have my one district and I do know that you have a different hat that you additionally wear. Um, I think that during the time that we were together um, in that remote, I got a lot of dancing with families and different kinds of things. And I think that that's something that I want to figure out a way to continue to do. Um, I've given resources um, and I think it just depends. I mean, I have kindergarten to 18. So in the range of participation is different. But the one thing I'm really excited is we have been given the green light, the Special Olympics is going to continue. And we, we have both the community-based, but what we have, we're a part of um, our Tri-Valley, my district and um, the two districts, um, two neighboring districts is we have our own Special Olympics schools program. And so we rotate and so I'm, my hope is that I'm in charge of basketball, which is in January, and then that, that will happen. And the soccer might be a little modified, but those pieces, because we were able to do the monthly fitness challenge during the remote, and it was fun, but it was a placeholder. It wasn't a, you get to, see, it didn't give everything. And we have, this is when the high school students run the, you know, run the show. So whatever school it's in, they're the MCs. And we usually have, you know, the, the engineering club goes and creates and makes some kind of device that assists students that are in wheelchairs and that don't, that are limited mobility and different kinds of things. And I'm excited. I'm just excited for that unified piece that um, we weren't able to do. I do not know if I'm gonna be able to do my in, in integrated PE, my um, inclusive PE. Our elementary PE teachers never even saw their kids, even though they were on campus with their kids. They had to do it still in a remote setting um, and everything, and they still were required to come to school. So, so I, I, I'm hopeful, but I know that I, that community piece is big and Special Olympics has played a, an, a big and important role for so many of the students and for the um, gen ed peers that have become a part of that, both at the elementary the sec and the secondary level. So I'm excited for that. Amazing. Darcy, did you have something yes. to add? Um, yeah. So. So I'm in Elk Grove Unified, and um, if you're not familiar with it, it's the fifth largest district in California, and we have um, seven itinerant adapted PE teachers just in the district. Um, so we just have a lot going on. We were the first, I think we were one of the very first districts in the state to shut down for COVID. And in fact, I think we were the first. Um, and then they went back hybrid, but they didn't allow um, any of the support providers to go back because we go to so many different school sites and so many different classrooms. And they basically told us we'd be super spreaders if we did. So I've been remote since the first day of lockdown of schools closing, which has been really bizarre. But what has happened is that I have established relationships with families, with parents who I had never met before. Um, a lot of times because maybe one parent comes to an IEP and then that happens to not be the one that I got to interact with on the screen. And I have, I have never ever in any of my teaching history had relationships with parents like I do now. And it is, it's amazing. I feel like it's gonna change everything because as an adapted PE teacher, I've found that the families were very remote from me. And it was really hard to be in contact with a lot of them and now they were forced to. And now they were also forced to see what I do and how hard I work and how I can take their equipment that they have or lack of equipment they have and come up with all kinds of ideas and do all these things and then have their kids actually be successful and improve skills. And I just feel like the respect that, that I've gained through that has been tremendous. And I think that the parent support is going to completely change my teaching going forward. I also, with that connection, found that when doing assessments, uh, when doing assessments, I used to send home a nice little survey. And now I actually interview the teacher or the parents on Zoom and ask them the questions. And oh my gosh, I got so much more information. I, it was like, I'd be taking notes. I'd have pages of content of information that these parents provided me about these children that I'd never known before. 
And it was so eye-opening and it was so helpful in my assessments. And we're writing my reports and I'd have all this information that the parents had provided and I could tie that into what I saw in the assessments. And it, it just, I feel like it changed everything. So going forward, I'm gonna try to schedule a Zoom um, conversation with parents before I do an assessment to get that information because I feel like I know what those students can do uh, better than I ever did before. And so that that's going to be probably my biggest change. But um, yay, parents, they were awesome. I can't even believe how hard they worked. And they followed all my instructions really well. <laughs> so yay, I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm really excited to actually see students in person this school year, because it's been a year and a half. <laughs> Yeah, I'm excited to go for it, Kasha. Um, I was just going to add, um, Darcy, 100%. I, what I also loved, and Stephanie, you touched on this too, was um, how parents don't understand what our class is a lot of times. And this was so eye-opening for them. I had parents show up in like regular clothes the first day. And then all of a sudden the next week they were in workout clothes. They're like, I'm ready, Mrs. G, let's go. They're like, I think the parents got a bigger workout than the kids did some days. Cause it was like, they were the one-on-one -on -one aid. They were manipulating. They were physically prompting, lifting, doing all the things. So they got good workouts. And I've even had parents email me after coming back to person and being like, why don't I get my workouts with Mrs. G anymore? <laughs> um, but I was going to add one thing that I use to engage my families and my community is social media. So I have an Instagram account that I post pictures of the students doing activities and um, different things that are coming up in our program and things like that, because I realized once I had my own kids, how hard it is to get our children to talk to us about their day. And I have two typical children. And I know that majority of my students don't have the verbal ability to share with their parents what they did at school. So I really um, loved doing Instagram for my parents because they were like, oh my gosh, this is what my kid does at school in your class. And it was really eye-opening and um, a really fun way for them to connect too. So social media has a lot of benefits to tying in the community and um, the families to your program. Awesome. Okay, so we're creeping up on 1159. I know it's so crazy, but ending on what Kasha said, I, I think I want to throw in this last question. And, you know, if, if you've got something, you know, throw that hand up, but it kind of reminded me of, you know, being able to highlight students um, through social media, through whatever format you've got. I know for me, um, I highlight students. This is not the postcard that I usually give this is just the postcard I have lying out but I, I send postcards home when students are are having you know an amazing year an amazing month amazing week an amazing day um, so um, final question here because I know we're running out of time and I know it was something that we did want to include um, what are your favorite ways to see or showcase student growth skill mastery Jen, go for it. I think my favorite way to see and showcase that, like, I know I always talk about unified, but it's, it's amazing. But just having those teammate and partners teach other teammate and partners and be like, look at how awesome you're doing. You're doing so well. You can teach other people like that. It just, it's mind blowing. Um, and I think too, like just the progress they make again with their peers is is really awesome. I think um, one activity that I did during a hybrid, right when we went into distance learning was that we would do an activity and then they take a picture of it and put it on Padlet with their partner. And then they could scroll through on their own and be like, oh, look, there I am. Look at, look at how I did that. Or look, you know, so um, I think those were kind of two things that came up is just like showing each other, like, we're really good at this. Like we can help each other, we can teach each other. Um, and it really helps our confidence too. That was the thing that popped out to me first. Go ahead, Kim. Am I even gonna say? Okay, um, in our school, we have a lot of confidentiality clauses, so we can't do a lot of social media stuff unless I cut their heads off. <laughs> and well, so anyway, so um, 
Uh, but what we do do is the kids are like, oh, Miss Kim, can you can you can you videotape me and send me to my therapist? So my kids love to take videos and send. I want my teacher to see me doing this. So I said, okay, so I'll videotape. We do a lot of videotaping and I'll like shoot it off to an email to their teacher or to their therapist um, or to their parent. And also they, they'll they tell me, can you please, oh, and I'll say, oh, you did this so great. Oh, can you show my therapist? I'm like, sure. So we have a great rapport in my school um, with our therapy departments and our teachers and stuff. And we're just constantly sharing and, and helping each other out and stuff. So I, I love that and all. And then for them to tell me to turn around and say, can you send this to my parent too? Um, that makes me feel so good because like you said, Stephanie, that our teach our kids are a lot of nonverbals and they can't tell their parents when they go home what they've done. Go for it, Cindy. Just a quick one. Um, I would agree, Kim. I know that I've been doing that for several years in IEP meetings where I when they did something, the kids did something great, um, you know, or did something different or they experienced it for the first time. I would make sure if I didn't get it to that parent, but the meeting was coming up in the next month or two, then I would then I would um, share and show it. It also was that opportunity for me to kind of share what we do in my class. They, I don't need to do that now, right now, because parents know what's happening. But I do plan on, um, as we continuing going on with the pictures and the videos, um, I think the seeing the growth, I look at um, as we practice for our Special Olympic events, um, we really get a lot of additional practice. So I really am able to see that baseline to, um, you know, to the, the game and in all the different sports, along with the goals. And those are obviously very important, but in the sense of the social piece that goes along with that, in the unified, especially I think of it, I think of my one high school student that, you know, was on that team. And when he started, he couldn't even, he could barely dribble a ball, let alone dribble forward, let alone a defense man, person be nearby. And for him to, and we did it as a progression. So, you know, there are other students out there um, that are in that. So I'm looking forward to kind of creating that, that piece of what's, what are, what's something that's maybe a social or a nugget they want, and then, and then go with that progression, that meaningful, irrelevant learning to them. And hopefully there's an, a goal attached to it, right? <laughs> so great. And then is that our Tracy, oh, Tracy and, our time? Yes. and then our time, I think. Yeah. Okay. Quickly. I I just want to reiterate, like the IEP can be so strong. Like I know I've always been considered by my team, the Winnie of the Pooh of the team, because I'm always celebrating and sharing the celebrations with the parents and they see their parent, they see their child as a, as a kid, not as a kid with special needs. And it's just the communication that we have just is so important. And uh, gosh, those tears. Oh, I've gotten a lot of tears before too. I love my parents and my kids. <laughs> Awesome. All right. Well, my goodness, time has flown. It is already 12.05. Um, does anybody have any lasting words to leave off the panel with? Anybody? Any, you know, good vibes? Anything at all? I'm you guys are awesome. I really loved having everyone coming together. I'm going to take a picture <laughs> and stuff because that's what, you know, and everybody. But um, I don't know if you guys have any lasting words. I just think that um, next year will be interesting, but we just have a lot more in our tool belt and we already, and we have parents, parents connected to us and understanding their students and, uh, and what we do more than we ever did before and stuff. So, all right, guys, show me, give me a smile, give me a wave. There you go. Thanks. Thank you so much to everyone. Best of luck to the next school year. Sending you all the positive vibes. Have a wonderful time with your students. Um, reach down into that tool belt. Grab whatever you learned out of it. And don't be afraid to try it out. Experiment and um, just have a great time. 
Thank you for attending the 48th Annual Elementary Physical Education Workshop. We're glad you were here. Please follow us on our social media platforms. EPEW can be found on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Please check out our website for links to more great sessions. Just go to epew-cp.weebly.com and click on the virtual EPEW 2021 tab at the top and scroll down. EPEW 2021 Educators Assemble would not be possible without the support and dedication from the amazing EPW committee. The committee has been hard at work for months preparing for this workshop. Thank you to Linda McGee, Barbara Gratton, Scott Wilson, Stephanie Sandino, Julie Miller, Jessica Monlux, Kayla Aylman, Shelby Lozano, Andrea Chavez, Scott Townsend, and Cindy Chase. Thank you for attending EPEW, where our motto is, come to learn, leave as family.